Okay, so tonight's session is the squat, pull, and hip flexor individual unilateral session. Don't know why. I'm dancing, I'm grooving. So we're doing safety bar squats still. I think I know what's wrong with my wrist. I think I have the queer veins tendonitis in my wrist. So the tendon, the base of the tendon here is inflamed. It makes sense why I can't fully extend my thumb and there's pain with radial movement. So it's getting a bit better. Uh, there's some exercises you can do. It's just inflamed, I think, from the position, the barbell, especially with this kind of kick to back position. I think so much volume just put the pressure in my wrists. Should have been straighter. Probably would have protected myself better from it. So we'll be doing safety squats or poor man safety squats again. How heavy will we go? Somewhere between 200 and 220, probably up to 220-ish again. So it should be a relatively easy session or relatively easy squats. So last session I did two by three. So I might do a set of five. I might do a couple of more trees. Not too pro problematic. We're not gonna stress this too much with the squats just at the moment. Then deadlifts, we did 100 kilos for tens. So I'll probably move up to 110 to 120 on the stiff legged deadlifts and then the hip flexors will just hit some higher volume on them and see how it goes so i've already done a lot of stretching my hip flexors done the couch stretch a lot a couple of times throughout the day so i'm gonna try to work through that a little bit gonna use the tears again today I'm using them in the last session as you saw and i quite enjoyed it so we'll keep messing around with those and uh yeah So I did some sprints yesterday. So first kind of flat sprint session. I did some very short, faster sprints. So about 15 meters. So sprinting is interesting or running or aerobic is gen in general is interesting. You can change intensity by controlling one of two variables essentially. You've got distance and speed or velocity even. So you go, Pick a distance, pick a speed. Longer the distance, the higher the speed, obviously the higher the intensity. And then, like all training, like we were talking about, you just reduce the intensity, the initial phases, and then increase some part of the intensity as the training sessions go on. And as the training block progresses, and as you become more adept, you increase that intensity further within your capacity to recover or within your capacity or needs to peak. So for me, yesterday, it was short distance, increasing intensity until I felt that I couldn't go any faster or I felt that I was actually slowing down. So I warmed up with my A and B skips and a few other little drills. Did about five sets of each drill and then hit some progressively faster or higher effort sprints and we'll acclimatize like that. So we will I'm going to do a little bit of testing next week, I think, if the weather's good, go to the outdoor track, get some numbers, and then progress from there. And obviously, we'll see how it goes. I don't really know why I'm dressed so liberally, to be honest. It's like seven, six degrees outside, and the shed's not that warm. And uh, I'm in my, my burks without socks for some reason, and no jumper. So I'm asking to be cold. It doesn't feel that cold. This kind of weather's making me look forward to our weightlifting camp next year. So we had one in Portugal. We have in Portugal again next year. So about five days of training. And uh, we'll be advertising that again after Christmas. Might do an athlete's one. We're trying to suss out if there's a track nearby that we could use.
Okay, we got the tears on. Probably still do these barefoot, but I'm not gonna lie to you, the, the concrete's kinda cold. It's cold and wet. It's cold and wet, guys. It's just so unstable, the squat variation. It's so, especially when walking out, you know, when you get under, you can't get really tight, and then walk back, you're kind of like, shimmy, shimmy, ah! But uh, it doesn't really matter. So the tier, they're a nice shoe. They really are. Good build quality, but, the forefoot flexibility just just a bit too soft just, just, just not quite right for really heavy squats they feel nice for snatching for cleaning you know lots of big lifters that use them in it, like in Qatar so they are a good shoe and they're very interesting but it's not quite just there yet which I know we've talked about a few times so 220 on the bar, we'll do meh, maybe a triplet this and see how it feels. So there is another shoe company making wide toe box lifting shoes. They contacted us a couple of months ago, but sending us out a pair. And they already have shoes on the market, so you, you probably have come across them. They have, I won't sell them out, but you've, they have a different wide toe box shoe that's involved in lifting but they had some QA shoes with their weightlifting shoes and their samples, so they're delayed. They got back onto us a couple of months later, so they were gonna send us out some shoes again. Haven't heard anything in a while. So it'll be interesting to see, it'll be interesting. Um, I think by the looks of the designs they've sent, I would wonder will they make the same mistake. You'd need the stability. Okay, let's do another set. So, it's so kind of hard to judge this ability with this. So everything feels fine. No aches and pains, it feels good. So it is what it is. I'm not too concerned with what I hit on these. Like I want to maintain it, but I'll start kind of make it more of an effort in a couple of weeks. But for right now, it's like meh, just gonna do what I feel like doing keep moderate, especially while I'm doing the safety bar style squatting. So no pressure. Okay, so they actually looks quite nice. So that's two by three. Sunday I did two by three. Today's Thursday. So I'll do another set of three at least, maybe I'll do four by three, see how it feels. If for some reason, like the next set gets really slow, I'll stop. I definitely won't be going heavy on these as the stability is not there. There's no reason to do super heavy on these. Now, would it be fine if I had to bail or something? Sure, but you know, who knows what will happen walking out with the whip. So there's no problem. There's no need. And to be honest, if anything, it's probably a good limiter right now when I should be recuperating instead with from just the heavy weights a little bit. But technically, they look quite nice. I'm pretty happy with those. Um, bar feel, it's kind of hard to, it's like, because the top, I usually judge squat weights by how heavy they feel from walking them out and how heavy they feel on my back. Not so much from actually squatting them, which I know sounds kind of funny, but that's how I perceive them. And if they feel heavy on the back, I perceive them as being harder. And they feel heavier on the back here because I'm not as tight. The bar feels a little bit looser. 
so I don't have as much of this going on. You know, I know I'm squeezing here, but it's not quite the same. It's not a solid mass to hold on to. Now, before anyone's wondering, I'm not complaining. This isn't that important right now, but it is of note. It's quite interesting. And I completely forgot I should have done some front squats tonight. Well, there you go. Too late now. So I'll do another set at 220 and we'll see how it feels in a minute. The temptation to do more in working sets is high, but rules are rules, Mr. Potter. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, last 220 feels pretty good. It'll be interesting to see how these develop over the next few weeks. Now my wrist is getting better, thankfully. Uh, I reckon maybe another three weeks. Hopefully the wrist should be tip top, maybe even two weeks if we keep doing the right stuff. So we're going to move on to some stiff leg deadlifts, we're going to do barefoot, or probably in the barks. But I don't want my toes to get cold. So do those 120-ish for sets of 10. And my hip flexor stuff. So yeah, it feels quite nice. Training is really nice at the moment. It's nice, it's like, it's fun, it's novel. I feel good. I don't feel like I'm dying all the time. I don't feel immense fatigue every single waking moment. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm fucked. So that's lovely. So that's, that's really something great. Okay, so let's do some stiff legs. Will I warm up? Will I go straight to 20? So one of the things you're supposed to do for the queer veins is grip training and what better grip training than 120 kilo no hook grip deadlifts. Um, the grip is getting me a little bit there. So someone was wondering last week why I don't do a very slow and controlled eccentric and to be honest it doesn't matter that much I think. It's important not to get too caught up in things, and I'm not saying this particular commenter did. Uh, it's just a, an innocent question, and it's good to, to really think about things like I was saying before. But it's also, you know, it's also not incredibly important. Am I moving heavyweight fast? Yep, yeah, one goal done. Am I feeling my hamstrings? Two, yep, another goal done. Does everything feel okay? Three, perfect. You know, we're we're getting somewhere in this as the weight's going up. Does it feel sufficiently challenging? Four, five, boof, perfect. You know, I think a big thing we see online at the moment, myself and there have been watching this because it's in a, you know, a subsection of the YouTube and this is on the hypertrophy specific side of things. And there's a couple of people involved in it. Uh, some of them we know, some of them don't know. And like Jeff Nippard, Bard, Mikey's Hotel, a few other people, I think Omar was in there and there's a few other guys who you might not have heard of, you might have become aware because of this. And they're all just super, super, like just, they're, they're getting into it, like in some, in varying degrees of the quorum in regards to the things like going to failure, how much volume, length and partials. And it's all very kind of, it's almost kind of funny looking at it from the outside, you know? Like I put up an Instagram story talking about my current training split, which we'll talk about in a minute. And someone was like, why am I doing, so, so what I said was how I'll be training hypertrophy is higher volume, progressively overload those sets week to week with the same or relatively similar movements and near but not to failure for the last set, you know? And that 
as far as we're aware, will get you a lot of the way for hypertrophy training. Now, there's a couple of reasons you don't want to go to absolute failure. As athletes, you don't want to absolutely trash yourself in terms of fatigue. You need to recover for actual athletic training. And so maximizing hypertrophy at the expense of your other endeavors doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And someone is like, why don't you go to failure? And it just, it doesn't make sense for me as someone to, to go all the way to failure. And what I always find quite interesting about these arguments is someone will be like 100% uh, failure or one rep shy of failure or two rep shy of failure or full range of motion or length and partials. And they'll say, you know, this group got 5% more hypertrophy, but as an athlete and someone training athletes, you're like, okay, maybe I can get 5% more hypertrophy, but will I be as strong through the full range of motion? No. Am I going to be more fatigued from other training? Yes. So is that going to outweigh the benefits of a little bit of extra hypertrophy? And we're talking 5% of a very small amount of hypertrophy for a bigger negative. It doesn't make any sense, you know? And so in my case here, we won't be doing that. And that's all we would do with our athletes and plenty of them gain muscle. When they need to gain muscle, I will gain muscle fine. <laughs> I've gained muscle before when I need it. So it's important not to be, you know, it's just training methodologies. Like there was that Kelly Starek clip we put up. We did a podcast with him and we put up a clip talking about hip extension. And I asked him why do you think so many field sports athletes have hamstring issues, you know? And he's like, he finds in his patients and people he treats, like he does this, it's not made up. People he treats often are missing hip extension based on the way he interprets it. And a couple of people, in the comments are like going off and we're like super mad, like embarrassingly mad. Like there was one dude who you can see when people share your reel and he shared it like two or three times in the preceding days, talking about different stuff and he left a lot of comments and kept going back commenting the other people agreeing with them, you know, and he had a very small Instagram following, which doesn't matter, like two or few hundred followers. And he, he's like, he, he called himself, <laughs> he's, he's I'm not making fun of him, but it is a true story. He called himself something strength coach, and I went down to his Instagram profile, and the first thing I saw was like front squat doubles at 100 kilos. <laughs> I was like, brother, can we just, can we, this is like me saying, uh, Owen Murphy, uh, 60 meter sprint coach, or um, Owen Murphy fucking jiu jitsu, or like, it's just, come on, just, can we just relax a minute and think about what people are saying and not assume the worst, and Let's not get too angry, you know? Let's not get too mad. So it looks like eights are enough tonight. The wrist is definitely better. When I articulate my thumb around the bar, it's much less painful, which is great. Yeah, wrist, the straps with a bit of pressure on it, but not too much, and I won't get as many quality sets done if I don't wear them. So eights tonight. Uh, next week we'll probably go for tens at 120 instead of moving up in weight. Just another form of progressive overload without having to massively increase the weight. Now, some of you might be wondering, why not RDLs? And to be honest, it doesn't really matter. Just doing stiff leg delis, so I've heard them. It feels nice. Less pressure on my wrist while I'm holding the barbell because I'm not holding it for as long a length of time. So my current training split is Monday Jiu Jitsu, Tuesday upper body, 
Wednesday, speed work. Thursday is squat and lower body work. Friday is jiu-jitsu. Saturday is speed and upper body hypertrophy. And then Sunday is squatting plus lower body work again. Then five times a week when I'm not doing jiu-jitsu, and if I have enough distance between the speed stuff, I'll add in 30 minutes of cardio. I've been doing that about six times a week up until now, and I probably won't do it immediately after the speed work. Um, I'll likely just leave when I stop speed work. I will finish there, and um, that should be enough in the terms of cardiovascular aerobic work. Now, a lot of people are asking an Instagram q and I put up, what about rest days? It's probably the most overwhelming question. And I think context or details is probably just more valuable there and will explain a lot. So basically, the intensity of all these sessions, in my opinion, can either be modulated or is just relatively low. Like for example, 40 minutes of push-ups and barbell rows, that's not the failure don't need a lot of fatigue management, you know? It's just a little bit of upper body hypertrophy training. The speed work, if it's gonna take more than half an hour, what the fuck am I doing in my training, you know? So that's not that intense. Uh, some gentle squatting compared to what squatting I was doing before, it's not even, it barely even registers. The most intensive stuff is probably these <laughs> stiff-legged deadlifts, you know? And BJJ can be modulated based on the intensity of how hard I want to go during a round. It's entirely self-regulating and highly skilled development. So all of the sessions are easily changed. I've also been training for just a very, very long time, you know, and I haven't taken any breaks. And so you build up a tolerance to routine exercise. Also as well, none of these are gonna be pushed to the absolute limit, you know. I'm not gonna be pushing the squat to the limit. BJJ is, you know, the limit is just, you get tired and you're basically fine within two days maybe. If you go as hard as possible, Upper body stuff, you know, even if you do go to failure, it will return relatively quickly. The muscles, the muscles are small. So the sprinting, you know, if it's modulating by speed, then you're never gonna go, go into crazy failure. If you're staying fast during those sessions, then, you know. And also, it's all, so none of those are gonna be, I'm not trying to bench the most weight. I'm not trying to only be as fast as possible. Uh, I will improve my speed, but you know, it's, there's a lot of options available. And if I do need to take a rest day, I'll take a little resty poos, no big deal. Okay, my good sirs and madams, thank you for watching today's training vlog. I am finished that session. Check out the Seek app on iOS and Android if you're trying to push any of your training, trying to get stronger, if you're trying to improve your athleticism, run the Becoming a Horse, trying to get your squat bigger, run the RTA or the RTA 2.0. If you want to get a press, run the Seek a Strict Press program. If you want a bigger pull, run the Seek a Deadlift program or Seek a Pull. All the iOS, Android, dynamic loading adjustments. Uh, we will not regret it. Access to the Facebook group then for weekly feedback sessions from myself and Dara, so you're never left alone. On top of that, you have access to the Coach Bot, which can answer your training needs. Hope you're enjoying these sessions and have a nice weekend.